that there is probable cause to believe that this is a forgery. We have a fraud, fraudulent document. We have a fraud taking place. The two examples on the far left are from the same post office where Barack Obama supposedly turned in his Selective Service paperwork. The stamp below is Mr. Barack Obama's and it contains only two digits for the year. Why? This photograph shows a PICA 2008 year stamp and a PICA 80 stamp. Since there are no 1980 PICA year stamps available, the 2008 was cut between the two zeros and inverted. This inverted cut stamp creates a similar effect, which closely resembles the one seen in Barack Obama's Selective Service Registration Card. This illustration shows what the 2008 PICA stamp looks like when cut in half and then inverted. There is a clear difference between the authentic stamp shown on the right and Mr. Barack Obama's on the left. Look at the distance between the zero and the innermost circle of the stamp. Look at the distance to the right of the zero and beneath the zero. The reason the numbers 8 and 0 are out of position on Barack Obama's registration card is because when the numbers 08 were cut away from the year 2008, they were not cut squarely. The person who cut them cut too close to the zero. So when 08 was turned upside down to become 80 and put back into the PICA stamp, it pushed too far to the right. In what is becoming a clear pattern for documents that are essential to the documentation of Obama's life narrative, the Selective Service card isn't just forged, it's poorly forged. Government mandate, DOD instruction says it has to be a four-digit year stamp. Looking at everything that we have here today, looking at that Selective Service card, I mean, that is obvious forgery. The question was asked, who vets the presidential candidate or who vets the president? The answer came back, the Constitution, and nobody vets the candidate. There is no FBI, NSA, CIA. The sheriff had a bunch of letters to those. He knows them all. Nobody does it. During our investigation, We've also learned that the Democratic National Committee are the ones that certify their candidate. And in that certification of nomination paperwork, they omit the constitutional language, saying that he meets the constitutional requirements. That card carries even further significance than the birth certificate. That card carries penalties. Five years in prison for failure to do so. $250,000 fine. But it also says something to the effect that you can hold public office. We agree with you that there is an agenda. We don't know who's running the whole thing. Um, I will tell you that we did receive information from three separate independent sources telling us that major media networks were threatened with criminal investigations, FCC investigations, and some people's safety was threatened. The people have been threatened in the media to even mention this issue. We got information that it was Soros operatives. We're not entirely sure who it was but we know that there's a major media blackout. We can prove 100% there's a blackout at Fox. We name names. Before we're done, we'll do it. And Fox is not the same channel it was even a year or two ago. This is beyond amateuristic. I, I don't even know what you call this. Melanie. <laughs> this president and his administration, in my view, represent the greatest set of lawbreakers that have run the federal government in our lifetimes. In one top secret mission. This is my last election, please. Yeah. And After my election, I have more flexibility. And this I transmit this information to Vladimir and Mr.
Your mission is simple, Mr. Obama. Win one last election to gain unchecked flexibility, weaken our defenses, and fundamentally transform the world. Dimitri will transmit the information. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Just my election, I am more flexible. We know less about Obama than we know about anyone who's ever been president of the United States. You have a president who is a dictator. A usurper and a charlatan. I think the president is dangerously close to totalitarianism. A few months ago he was saying, the Congress doesn't count, the Congress doesn't mean anything, I'm going to rule by decree and by administrative regulation. Now he's basically saying the Supreme Court doesn't count, it doesn't matter what they think, they can't review our legislation. That would leave just him as the only branch of government standing. Uh, here, is, by the way, is the weather underground bomber, the terrorist. The FBI said the Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. My name is Al Holton. I was a letter carrier with the Glenelg Postal Service. Carried mail from Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Ayers. Thomas Ayers has a son that's been in the news whose name is Bill Ayers. Can you recall the conversation? She came to the door. She started uh, enthusiastically talking to me and she referred to him as a foreign student. A young man, black man, walking down the street uh, just after I had delivered the mail to uh, the Ayers home. And he greeted me and he was very polite and immediately he entered into conversation with me and told me that he had come to uh, thank the heirs uh, family personally for helping him with his education i asked him i said well now that you're out of uh, school what are your plans what are you going to do and he said and he looked right at me he says i'm going to be president of the united states and there was kind of a little bit of a grin in his face when he said it. And I know how people will say things because they have an ambition or something, but it did not come across that way. It came across like this was something that's already been determined. What made you think it was the same person? Because he had come to thank them for helping uh, with his education. And that was the topic of the conversation that I had with Mary. I am absolutely positive that it was Barack Obama. This headline from the 19, 1970 says it all. Four bombs at Murtaugh Home, notorious uh, terror group, the Weather Underground, claiming responsibility for an attack on the family of a New York state Supreme Court justice. The bombing was led by radical Bill Ayers, the same guy screen right, uh, who eventually formed a relationship of some sort with Democrat presidential nominee Barack Obama. While my parents, my brother, sister and I were asleep in our house, uh, the Weather Underground uh, launched an attack on our family home, set off uh, at least three, possibly four bombs, one of them under the gas tank of the family car. Car bomb. Looking to kill us. The New York cell of the Weather Underground uh, that launched the attack on my family. Mm -hmm. uh, three weeks later, at Bill Ayers' direction, they were assembling bombs in Greenwich Village right. in order to attack uh, the officers' club at Fort Dix, New Jersey, whose organization uh, cost the lives mm -hmm. of at least three, if not more, police officers. Bill Ayers' wife, Bernadine Dorn, also one of the original leaders of the Weather Underground, uh, and the woman who took credit for the bombing at our home and in other New York targets, Bernadine Dorn uh, was a, uh, an attorney by training, she couldn't get admitted to bar because of her crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ayers' uh, family got her a job at a large Chicago law firm, Sidley and Austin, in the 1980s. She was a contemporary at that law firm in the 80s with Michelle Obama. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? 
the only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious.